It was a wonderful Friday afternoon in October of 2022 when six powered parachutes went flying over the San Rafael Swell out of a place called Buckskin Well and out over the little Grand Canyon of the San Rafael River. Because my machine was having some problems, I hitched a ride with Brian Peterson in the back seat of his machine. But just as much fun as flying over a place like this, for me at least, is looking at the landscape below and trying to interpret and remember and learn more about what I'm seeing down there. The San Rafael Swell is part of the Colorado Plateau. It's a strange area. <laughs> Um, complex yet simple at the same time. Anyway, let's take a look at the geology of this fantastic landscape. The first thing you notice probably as we fly over this is the the layering of the, of the rock layers below. Each of those layers, like the rings of a tree, are telling part of the story of the growth of this landscape, the changes that have taken place as endless, endless eons of time have uh, put together a, a complex and yet simple story. A story of water and erosion, of shallow seas and lakes and deeper lakes and seas invading and retreating and back and forth as the earth's surface has moved upwards and downwards and in result in uh, response to stretching and crunching and twisting of the earth's uh, lithosphere the rock layer that we walk on <laughs> as we as we live on this planet One of the first things geologists do when they move into a place like this is establish uh, a structural map of the territory, a mapping of the rock layers and trying to determine the ages of the various layers by using things like fossils to determine when these rocks were laid down and under what circumstances all that took place. So let's take a break here and take a look at the stratigraphic sequence of the Little Grand Canyon. This diagram shows the different rock layers uh, down towards the far end of the Little Grand Canyon. The arrow at the top there pointing to, points towards the entrance to Buckhorn Draw or Buckhorn Wash. Down in that area around the Swinging Bridge, we're in the Moenkopi Formation. The Moenkopi is a red sandstone of Triassic age. About 240 million years ago is when it was deposited. It's a lot of shale and mudstone and limestone. Then just uh, actually just above the Moenkopi is the Cayenta Formation. The Cayenta is sandstone and, and shale. This was laid down by shifting stream beds uh, in the, about 190 million years ago. The Cayenta contains a lot of dinosaur fossils and, and uh, dinosaur footprints. The Cayenta Formation actually sits on top of another formation, the Wingate Sandstone. The Wingate Sandstone is wind-blown sand that piled up in sand dunes in the late Triassic period about 200 million years ago. And then, as this diagram continues sliding downward, we come to the Chin Li Formation, which was <laughs> late Triassic period, 
uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 200 million years ago. Um, this is mostly rather soft shale that produces the badlands of Utah and Arizona. Um, petrified forest is found in the Chin Lee Formation. So anyway, it's a complex mixture of, of rock. It makes some mighty beautiful scenery though. And in between times when these materials were being laid down, there were also stretches of time when there was no deposition and instead erosion was taking place. And so there are gaps between the time of the Wingate, for example, and the Cayenta, a gap that geologists call an unconformity. Uh, just a time when we don't know what was happening, really. So, as we fly across this country, <laughs> we're flying across an enormous amount of history. Um, just almost blows the mind to think of the time and whatever else has gone into these these places that we zip over now at, well, what, 30 miles an hour in our powered parachutes? But that's not all of the story of this land. Also, during the deposition and erosion and who knows what else was going on here, there were times when the continent of North America was pulled, sort of stretched apart, and then scrunched together. And as all this was happening then, these rock layers were being deformed and twisted and pushed and turned and faulted and broken and finally produced what's called the San Rafael Swell, a kind of uplifted area sort of in the middle of Utah. And so this diagram shows what happened as a result of the continent being pushed together. It shoved the rock layers that now make up the San Rafael Swell into a kind of a dome uh, called an anticline. It rises up on the east side and then sort of levels out and eases out on the west side. And what we see as the top of a flat plateau right now is the makings of another of those unconformities, a period of time when erosion is stripping away what has been deposited here in the past. And who knows what comes next? Will this land somehow, someday, be overrun by some kind of a shallow sea? where deposition can begin to occur again? Who knows? No way of telling. And finally, the last part of this little story, we visited another spot on the San Rafael Swell that's pretty prominent, quite famous, a place called the Sinkhole. The Sinkhole is just a pit that drops down, I'm not sure how far. <laughs> it was really frustrating because I couldn't find very much information about the sinkhole at all. One article I did find seems to indicate that it was a fairly recent discovery, or maybe it just recently happened a little while ago, although I can't tell how many years ago. There just isn't any information that I've been able to locate so far. But there you can see the sinkhole as we fly over it. Someone has built a nice fence around it to keep people from driving their four-wheelers into it and things of that sort, which would probably be pretty messy if you did. Anyway, um, sinkholes are formed when perhaps there's a some of the limestone underlying the countryside has been eroded away, dissolved. In some cases, um, 
mines have collapsed and produced sinkholes above them. Just how this one formed and when and what the other details are on this is something I'm going to keep digging into because, doggone it, I'm curious. What is the story behind this sinkhole? Going to have to keep digging and try to find out. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed our little jaunt over the um, San Rafael Swell. And I hope that maybe this uh, little trying to retell some of the geology of the structure and history, the geologic history of this place, might make it a little more interesting for you. So, thanks for coming along and... Uh, Let's go flying again.